y'all for coming out. If you would, just grab a big red book and turn to 143, just over in the glory land. Clouded day. same opening there. He set me free. Say 
standing and we'll take up our offering. Uh, Brother Danny Montgomery, would you bless us, please? Yeah.
God so loved this world that he gave his only son. He would have died if I had been the only one. Now he bore the guilt, the sin, and the shame. He spoke not a word as they mocked his name. midst of it all, in the midst of it all, God has been faithful, in the midst of my trials, God has been true, just when I think God has forgotten, and I must walk. Hand on me in the midst of it all. When the storms of life are raging all around me, circumstances mount up so high. I cannot see, but I feel his hand slip into mine. All I will ever need in him I find. And once again, he'll rescue me in the midst of it all. In the midst of it all. Sometimes I wake up in the morning I see I've made it through the night Oh, I listen We gather round the table, bow our heads in thankfulness. With tear filled eyes, my heart cries, still bless. There's never a day he doesn't give me all I need when I wake up to. Sometimes I try to count them 
There's too many I confess So with thoughts of praise I just say Are you past? 
past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Tell, let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. guilty who would care that much about me let me tell you about my Jesus oh. he makes a way when there ain't no way rises up from an empty grave ain't no sinner that he can't save let me tell you about my Jesus his love is strong
lot of things in my lifetime, but smart wasn't always one of them. But I was sure glad to know as a young boy, I called him the Lord of my life, and I called it quits to a whole lot of sinning. But you know, it's because of that commitment. People think it's funny and laugh and call me foolish. But let them go ahead and laugh, because you see, that don't really bother me at all. Because even a fool can see by the shapes he's in that this old world's about to fall. And I know as I let Jesus call the shots, well, I ain't got nothing to fear. And when that rule is caught up yonder, don't bother calling me, because I ain't even going to be here. Call me gone.
different this morning and we surely do miss Ryan and, and keep him in our thoughts and prayers uh, but at this time uh, we'll turn it over to brother Rex he's he's got a devotional prepared for us Thinking earlier. Well, we don't need to be on that no way, but anyway. Uh, I was thinking earlier, you know, the Bible speaks of shepherd and sheep and flock and all this, and we were talking earlier about how potent Satan is getting and how powerful he's getting and all that, and, <clears throat> you know, that's exactly what we're witnessing this morning. The best way for a thief to spread the sheep was to get after the shepherd. And that's exactly what Satan done this morning. He went after our shepherd. We need to remember him. We need to lift him up. He will feel so disappointed because he can't be here. I spoke to him earlier this morning. And, and, and I told him, I said, Ryan, the Lord knows what he's doing. I said, he, he's in this. He knows exactly what's going on. I said, we'll pray for you. You pray for us. And I said, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. I don't know what's going to happen, but one of these days, we'll understand. We'll understand. But I appreciate all of you coming back anyway, but <clears throat> I'll try not to keep you very long unless the Lord changes my mind. I Personally, I can't do anything, but I, I did want to share a little food for thought with you here this morning that he put on my mind. If you have your Bibles, turn to the second book of Thessalonians. Let's read a few verses of scripture. We're always talking about what's going on and, and what's going to happen and the time we're in and all this stuff. And Paul kind of laid it out pretty plain to the Thessalonians right here in the second uh, chapter of Second Thessalonians. He was talking about the rapture of the church and when it'll take place. <clears throat> so if you have your Bibles, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, beginning with the first verse. He said, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there first come a falling, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. For that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know what <coughs> withhold us that he might be revealed in his time. For this mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let, let us will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose working, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and sign and lying wonders. Oh, the Lord, and ask his blessing <clears throat> on this this morning. Heavenly Father, once again, we bow before you, Lord, just to thank you for this morning. Lord, again, I thank you for these people that gave their time to show up and to be here this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll just reach down and touch here this morning. Lord, I pray you'll touch each and every heart that's assembled here in your presence this morning. Lord, we just commend ourselves into your hands right now. Lord, we really don't understand what's going on. Lord, we don't know what you want to accomplish here this morning. But Lord, I pray that you'll just take over this service. Just touch me, Lord, in a special way. Lord, just give me the words that need to be spoke here this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll anoint me. I pray that you'll anoint this word. Lord, let it go forth and touch. Lord, I pray that 
you to put your hand up on it. I pray that you that will open hearts and minds here this morning. Lord, again, we ask that you just have your way here in our midst. And Lord, whatever we see you do, Lord, we're going to thank you and we're going to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> the part I want to call your attention to <coughs> is the third verse. He said, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there, there come a falling away first. We talk about this falling away, and, and all through the years when we've talked about the falling away, and, and <laughs> oh, well, <clears throat> it's okay, I guess. But all the years we've talked about this falling away, you know, I've always considered it being the church losing members and people just quitting going to church and all this or that and other. But like we talked earlier, we talk about the church in Jerusalem. You know, there can be a falling away and the church never lose a member from the congregation. You know, the church at Jerusalem, was where that, that was where the church started. That's where the Holy Spirit moved on the day of Pentecost. And it went on there for several years and those people done good. And then all at once the Lord gave them a commandment. And they didn't want to follow that commandment. They didn't want to do what he told them to do. And he come up with a bunch of people that he couldn't use. And he had to, had to find him somebody that he could use. And, and the base of operation during that time, so to speak, moved from the church at Jerusalem to the church at Antioch. And it wasn't the church itself. It was the people in the church that caused the problem. It was the people that done the falling away. Uh, Jesus teaches us in the Gospels and he teaches uh, in his word that he's a whole lot more than just a Savior. But there's so many people out there that, that's just like a person that I heard about here a while back. There, there was a man talking and he, he made the remark that he asked a man to come to church and the man told him, he said, I don't have to go to church, I'm saved. And that's the attitude a lot of Christian people have got. You know, they don't want to put anything into that relationship. The Lord Jesus Christ gave his all for us as Christian people. He died on the cross. He sent us the Holy Spirit. He told us in the Gospel of John that he would send us a comforter. And he said when he sent the comforter, listen to what he said. He says, These things have I spoken to you, being present with you. But the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, when the Father whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. You know, the Lord has got things for his people to do. Paul was talking about uh, the, the Holy Spirit hindering things. The, the one he's talking about here that hinders Satan, holds Satan back, and all this, that's the Holy Spirit that he's talking about. The reason the Antichrist can't come forth now is because of us Christian people here in the world. But we talked about earlier, you know, there's so many people that come to church on Sunday, and when they go out on Monday, then they live just like the world. And there's so many churches out there today that the world is so involved in, and, and they're so caught up in it, they have no testimony. They have no witness. They, they concentrate on basketball games. They concentrate on activities for the kids. You know, the Word of God is hardly ever preached. It ain't top priority in those churches. The Holy Spirit can't move in a congregation like that. But it's our responsibility as individual people to, to keep our lives where we're, we're supposed to be and keep ourselves in a shape where the Lord can use us. You know, you have so many people that come in here one time on Sunday morning. They see no use whatsoever in coming to Sunday school. They see no use whatsoever in coming to Bible study on Wednesday night. The Bible teaches that, that salvation is more than just fire insurance. It, it's a relationship with a living person that lives inside of us, the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave everything he had on that cross, actually bled to death for us. And just like this morning, I got a call about probably 8.30, 30 minutes before I had to leave and, and told me that this is what I needed to do this morning. Well, that's out of the ordinary. You know, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't have anything prepared. When I come in the door and picked up the bulletin that Ryan had, right on the front of that, what did it say? <laughs> it says the Lord Jesus Christ said he would supply all of our needs through the riches of his grace. I mean, you know, what do you expect? If 
James, we said this earlier. James said, be you doers of the word and not hearers only. If the Lord speaks to you and makes you a promise and you don't act on that promise, what else can the Lord do? What can he do? You know, I, I, I talk to, to people all the time and, and get aggravated at myself. In the Gospels, Jesus taught a parable about the soul and the seed. And he talked about one particular group of seed that fell among the thorns. And he said the people that received the word done okay for a while. And then the cares of the world sprung up and it began to choke the word out. I have that problem all of my, uh, my life. I, all my Christian life I've dealt with that problem right there. I still have that problem. The cares of this world will come in and they'll take my focus off of studying and they'll take my focus off of doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But, you know, there's a lot of difference in saying I'm saved. I've got this far in church and living the Christian life. Where, where the church's power comes in and where the church's testimony comes from is, is the members of the church. The way what people see in their life, you know. Uh, you know, I was thinking about that uh, yesterday. I was trying to study and I had so much on my mind and, and the Lord brought to my mind what he said in the Gospel of Matthew. Listen to this. It said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. I was thinking about that, and I remembered a week or so ago in Bible study that, that we studied about, you know, God's grace is out there. It's free. It, it's, there's no end to it. There's an endless supply of it. But the Lord expects us to ask for that grace when we need it. And this crossed my mind, and I said, Lord, you just brought this to my mind. I said, I can't get this mess out of my mind. I said, I need to focus on your word. I've got a job to do. I need your help. Send me the grace to get this mess out of my mind. Instantly, what was going on in the world didn't make one bit of difference. Not one, Don't make no difference right now. I could care less about what's going to happen tomorrow. And when I stood right here the first thing this morning, and I felt the touch of that spirit, I knew right then nothing else made no difference. This is what it's all about, folks. This is what it's all about right here, right here. But let me ask you this. When you go out of here today and you go to work in the morning, will you feel the same way? What do you feel in the morning? Do you want to feel this way in the morning? Remember what God said. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and it will be opened to you. Call on the name of the Lord. Make an effort to put him first and foremost in your life. That's the secret to the whole thing right there. He wants to be in the midst of everything. He wants to be in the midst of our life. But so many times, we don't want it that way. You know, we talked earlier about, about you seeing people out here just doing this and doing that and doing everything, and, you know, and, and lost people say, well, I don't want to be like that. I know they say that because I used to do the same thing. That's what I look for. I look for somebody going to church that lived like the world through the week, and then I could use them to ease my conscience. You know, and <clears throat> we talk about witnessing the people, and we need to witness the people. I saw a church sign several years ago that said, preach the gospel always, but use words if you have to. And that makes a lot of sense. We had a lady right here Wednesday night testify that her boss called her into the office and said, I need to talk to you. And she said, I thought, well, what in the world have I done? She said she got in the office, and, and the boss told her, she said, I know you go to church, and I know you pray, and I help with that mess up yonder at Waverly, and I saw some things that just got me tore up. She said, I need you to pray for me. I need the Lord to help me through this. This lady didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to do, but she knew she needed some help. But she saw enough in, in the lady that she called into the office that she knew what kind of life she had. And the lady testified to us. She said, I hadn't said a word to her. I hadn't testified to her. I hadn't talked to her at all. I hadn't said a word. But still, she witnessed to the lady. She witnessed to the lady. You know, people say, well, I don't know what to say. I can't witness nobody. I don't know what to say. Several years ago, I, I run into a man, and, and he was always coming up with this stuff about, you know, putting the Lord down. The scoffers, like we talked about in, in Second Peter. <clears throat> and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, just give me something to tell this man. You know, I, I'd like to have something just to shut him up. 
and, and the thought began to come through my mind, and I told him, I said, you know, the Bible says Jesus died on the cross, and, and he rose again on Easter Sunday morning, and, and he done all this to save our souls. I said, I can't tell you that's an absolute fact because I wasn't there, and I didn't witness that. But I said, you get on over in Acts where it talks about uh, the Lord sent Peter to a man by the name of Cornelius sent him to his house and when Peter began to preach and Cornelius believed that Holy Spirit fell on him and his soul was saved I said I can tell you for a fact that is the truth that happened to me I was eyewitness to that the apostle Paul met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus he saw the risen Christ I've never seen the risen Christ but when the Lord touched the apostle Paul's heart and changed his life you study the book of Acts. All the rest of his preaching, what did he share with the world? What the Lord done for him? We have all got that testimony. You don't have to have any proof. You are the proof. What the Lord done in your life is the proof. Amen. They can't argue with that. They can't argue with that. You know, and and that's why that's why it's so important, so important to try to live a Christian life. I, I was thinking about that <clears throat> a week or so ago. And, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. We're not going to be perfect. We're not going to do everything just like we're supposed to do. But all this and that and other, we can't. But if you come to church here this morning and you throw your hand up and you say, I love the Lord, and then you go to the grocery store in the morning and you go to the service station in the morning and somebody cuts you off and you lose your temper and you give them a piece of your mind, you are not living a Christian life. That is not what it's all about. It, it's it's the little things like that. You know, Paul, I don't remember if it was Ryan preached or if I studied it, but the thought come to my mind yesterday that Paul said that he kept his body under submission. You know, but the, with that that's what the Lord expects. That's what he expects. All he expects us to do is allow him to help us. He sent the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is there for us to use. And the Bible says that one of these days we're going to stand before the Lord and we're going to give an account of what we've done in this life, whether it be good or bad. You're not going to be judged that day for your sin. Your sin has been put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sin has been done away with completely. What you're going to be judged on is how much did you heed that the Lord told you to do. How obedient were you to what the Lord told you to do? That's what we're going to be judged for right then. If you're here this morning and, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you don't know anything about the fire insurance or nothing that we're talking about. But I just want to share with you right quickly <clears throat> that ain't nothing you've done that got you in that shape. You didn't do nothing terribly bad. You didn't do anything extremely wrong to get you in that shape. The Bible teaches that something we were all born with. Paul told the church at Rome, he said, as by one man, sin entered into the whole human race. Jerry Cagle used to call it that Adam seed that we all inherited. That's the problem. We inherited that, that, uh, that curse when we were born. And the only way to remove that is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he stirs your heart, and, and he pricked your heart, and he lets you know beyond a shadow of a doubt if there ain't a change made in your life that you're going to spend eternity in hell, then you can rest assured that he's calling your name. He's calling your name. You don't have to know one thing. You don't know what prayer to pray. You don't need nobody to pray a prayer for you. All you need to do is say, Lord, I'm tired of living this way. Help me. I promise you he'll take over from right there. You'll never have another problem, not another problem. I appreciate your time this morning. I didn't know what the Lord was going to do, didn't know what he had in mind, but I knew he'd do something. But anyway, anyway, think about it. Think about it. We don't have to worry about nothing. We don't have to carry all these burdens, carry all these problems or nothing. The Lord suffered terribly. So we wouldn't have to do that. But still and yet, most of the time, we don't want him in our life. We want to just keep going and doing our thing. We don't want him to be part of the life because we're afraid he'll ask us to do something that, that we don't want to do.
if he asks you to do something you don't want to do, tell him you don't want to do it and watch him work. I promise you, the first thing he'll change is he won't to. He'll change he won't to. We all do what we want to do. That's why you're here this morning, because you want to be. But, you know, look at the people that use this coronavirus for an excuse. I know it's a real thing. I know it's dangerous. It ain't nothing to play with and all, but it's a Lord thing. It's a Lord thing. If it didn't belong to the Lord, the doctors could handle it. They can't even figure it out. You know, it ain't man-made. It ain't man-made. That's why they can't. It's in the Lord's hand, everything. I just want to see one of these days when Darden Baptist Church stand before the Lord. I don't want us to have one thing to be ashamed of. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That's my one desire. That's my one desire. And whatever it takes to do it, if it takes standing up here scared to death, turn it over to the Lord and fill in because Ryan can't be here, that's all right. That ain't very much to ask after what the Lord done for me. It ain't. It ain't very much to ask. Just because you have to put forth a little more effort, go another step, it ain't no problem. He went a lot further than that for us. A lot further. I guess the Lord can. I guess we can have a song of invitation at him if you don't mind this morning. Sometimes it's good to not know what's going to happen or what's going on. Just let the Lord have his way and see what he'll do. But as I get us a song ready this morning, if the Lord's touched your heart, if you need something, you need, got something you need to talk to him about or, or anything, just feel free. This altar is open. You can come down here and make your way. And I guarantee you, the Lord will meet you right here. <laughs> Spirit of the Lord, it's gonna 
song to heaven and let the praises ring let him use your life and hear that choir sing well done well done dear faithful one though the mountains were steep
on the dress up before we all are going to be striving to hear one of these days. Anybody got a word before we dismiss this morning? Anything else? Let's be engaged in God's house this morning, haven't we?
Stay healthy. Stay the health. All hearts and minds clear. Let's go to the Lord and thank Him for what He's done this morning. Lord, as we come to the close of this service, we bow before you, Lord, just for answering that prayer. Lord, you showed up here one more time. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for loving us enough just to show up here and own this. Lord, I thank you for every person that come through those doors here this morning. Lord, again, I pray you'll touch every heart that's assembled here. I pray you'll bless, Lord, in a way that only you can. Lord, just give them something special this morning, Lord, something they know that's from you. Lord, bless them for the effort that they put forth. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the ones in our church family that are sick. I pray especially for Brother Ryan and his dad in that situation. Lord, all of them that have been touched by this, the ones that are going through different things, Lord, we lift them up to you right now. Lord, I pray that you'll just be near and dear to each and every one of them. Lord, I pray for us as a church congregation. Lord, I pray that you'll keep us together in the shape that we're in right now. Lord, I pray that you'll always gather us in here around you. Lord, I pray you'll always be the center of everything that goes on here at Darden Baptist Church. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for who you are and for what you are. I pray now that you'll go with us as we go our separate ways. Just watch over us, care for us, deliver us back at the next appointed hour that we might worship again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.